Hello everyone, presenting the reading, a framework for organizing the tools and techniques of participatory design. So participatory design or PD for short, is a approach towards designing that over the last 20 to 30 years or so has become more and more prevalent uh, across all different uh, forms of design work um, and processes. And it's been used within spatial design, product development, industrial design, as well as architectural design. And PD is the, is the concept of using non-designers within the design process in co-design activities that can uh, help evolve and develop uh, improved uh, iterations of whichever product or architectural uh, project they may be working on. Um, these people involved could be potential users, stakeholders, people within the development team, who are coming from different disciplines, such as uh, marketing, sales, or engineering, for example. And the idea is to combine this variety of experiences, interests, and roles to create a more rounded and well uh, thought out product at the end of the design process. Um, within PD, there is uh, some unique lingo and linguistics used to uh, define particular things. So just quickly to just kind of explain a few of those that might will pop up throughout to uh, avoid any confusion. We've got a probing, uh, and this is basically the uh, idea of learning more information and data about people's experiences and cultures, the people involved within the uh, PD process, that is. And you've got priming, and this is the, uh, the preparation or lack thereof, uh, preparation of a person who will be involved in the PD process. Then there's understanding, which is the learning about the user's experience during the PD process. Uh, generating, which is simply just the generation of new ideas from the uh, activities that are undertaken. And then we've got tools, which are different materials and components used within the PD activities, and a toolkit being a compilation of those said tools. A technique. Uh, which is how all the tools are used in an action. For example, if you had a stack of cards as your toolkit and each card being a tool, uh, the technique would be how they could be sorted, collaged, used to tell stories, or any, any, all those represent techniques, basically. Um, and to sum it up, a method is just a combination of toolkits and techniques. And finally, Approach being a overall mindset used throughout each PD that is undertaken. Um, for example, for this presentation, to get a bit meta with it, the approach is the mindset that everyone involved and everyone here is coming into this with the mindset of willingness to collectively indulge and discuss the topic as a uh, participating group, effectively. Um, traditionally, PD has always had its own uh, in different traditions and focuses across the board um, when different groups and designers are uh, using this technique. For example, some uh, design projects have, will focus on the use of drama and theatre and design games with the idea of provoking the idea of new mock-ups and prototyping techniques from those participating for the designs and develop whereas some others will focus on how non-designers will articulate different uh, proposals to just hand them on to the professional development teams to then develop the uh, prototyping from there, while some other approaches have been to use probing kits as the focus where they would then get a understanding of the future users through the probing kits to then create a more targeted and ideally a uh, more successful product, but these all still just use different techniques of involving other non-designers within the process, but ultimately do still end up being uh, just designer finishing off the project. So the text, uh, it presents a, a framework, so to speak, um, to outline a more structured and uh, sort of thought out approach towards participatory design. And within the framework, they focus on three main sort of uh, subcategories. 
these being uh, form, purpose, and context. And then each of these categories themselves have their own set of subcategories, uh, which I've broken down. So moving into form, they break this down into making, telling, and enacting. So these are the different actions and activities that the people involved within the process can undertake. So an example of making would be collaging or mapping or making mock-ups and those kinds of things. Uh, talking could be something such as keeping a log or a diary. And then acting or enacting would be anything from improvisational um, scenarios, uh, games, using props to represent different sort of design features. Of course, this all with variation depending on whether we're designing sort of a, uh, an architectural thing or a product, different forms of these would be appropriate. But the form is outlining the activities that the people involved in the PD will undertake. And then the purpose, and the purpose would essentially be the why. Why are these activities being done? And they break the why down into probing, priming, understanding, and generating. And whenever approaching any of the forms, it, you need to understand what the purpose is for. Are we trying to probe the user to learn more about them and how to develop the product? Or are you priming them? And, or are we skipping both of that and going straight to a product um, or a more further iterated product to get a understanding or generation of new ideas from the user? And then, when you sort of cross-check cross some of these forms and purposes, you can start to see how creating this framework makes the whole, streamlines the whole process. Because we can, if we think about a collage, for example, this, would be, this form would be successful in all purposes, depending on the collage that you were creating. Whereas a uh, improvisation form would, uh, would not help with any probe or priming uh, as you're not gonna, you can't prime someone with an improvisational task and you're not going to understand how they're experiencing a product. However, it will help with generating new ideas potentially. So particularly with these first two, a form of purpose, there's a lot of uh, crossover where you can, using the framework, there's, you begin to be able to establish which approaches would be more successful before just jumping into them. And moving into context, Context is broken down to four subcategories, being the group size, face-to-face -face versus online, venue, and relationship. So context can both be a physical context as well as a more emotional sort of context. Um, starting with group size, it's uh, depending on what the session that is going to be conducted within the PD is. There are a lot of situations where individual can be more effective, however, is always more expensive, whereas a group can be a lot cheaper and a lot more efficient, however, not, ne not necessarily more successful, as you end, can end up categorizing a lot of people into one rather than getting unique points of view. Uh, then you've also got, particularly in the modern era and particularly with the last year of a, a lot more Zoom calls, and everything, the face-to-face -face versus online uh, context, where similarly with the individual to group, face-to-face -face will pretty much always be successful, whereas online, you can complete some more basic forms, such as the collaging that could be succeeded online, or, um, or a talking uh, form such as diaries could be completed online, but pretty much anything in the enacting form is enabled to do online as even in this class we see how hard it can be to everyone to kind of work together and act together so you again get this start seeing this overlay um, of how different approaches within context and form will work and within context and the face-to-face -face versus group sizes we can see very clearly that individual and face-to-face -face are the best, but also the most expensive. 
Um, in terms of venue, the venue is determined heavily upon what you decide on between the first two categories, because obviously if you need a lot of people face to face, your venue is going to be a lot. However, the venue is, needs to be considered in terms of could it be in a work environment? Should it be in a sports environment? Should it be in a, um, a swimming pool, for example? And it just comes down to heavily on the context of what the, um, the what you're designing, the final outcome is, because you want to maintain a relevant venue to what the project is for. And finally, the uh, the more emotional context being relationship and the framework talks about having stakeholders who stakeholders being people that are going to be conti continually relevant to this product so you can continue to show them iterations of the design as it develops and by maintaining these same people um, and continuing this relationship um, they will essentially be primed for the next uh, like activity from the previous one and you can see the evolution with the product and how things improve or worsen throughout the different iterations but you may also want fresh people uh, when showing products as you might want to if you want to have a group that is not primed and you want to understand how uh, a full like fresh set of hands on let's say uh, a new phone as a product rather than someone who's already familiar then you want to remove any relationship or priming with that person um, and then with all these uh, different areas of uh, like within the framework the form the purpose the context you can start to see how this framework can tie the whole process together such as you might um, you might want to use diaries as your uh, form uh, in order to prime candidates for a face-to-face -face activity. And by doing this, you're combining the form, the purpose, you can look through the different techniques of doing it, and you can establish this might be your most direct and successful approach towards developing your design. And so this framework presented in this reading is essentially a sort of hypothetical outline of how participatory design could be uh, undertaken in the future and how a sort of they say themselves within the text that they're sort of putting this out there for a bit of feedback on how whether or not they believe the this framework would be more successful or help in PD in the future and yeah, anyway, thank you for listening, and I hope you learnt a little bit about PD.